Good morning and welcome to worship this morning. I think my mic, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Good morning and welcome to worship this morning. I think it's finally a little bit of a cool nip in the air, right? I was tired of sweating in December, so it was kind of nice to be a little cool this morning. Hey. <laughs> so you're in for a treat this morning. Not only are our children going to come and tell the story, but our youth are also going to stand up and, and tell us what we are to be, that we are to be a sanctuary. We are to be the ones who go and tell the story of Jesus and his love. Today at 2 o'clock, a group of people, and that could include you, are going to meet here at 2 o'clock and go Christmas caroling to some of our um, older people in the congregation. So if you'd like to go, just show up here in this parking lot out front. And um, the route has already been set and, and we'll go caroling. Reminder to church council, um, those who are elected to serve next year and the current council, we meet today at 11.30 downstairs in the um, conference room. I think that's all the announcements that I have this day. Does anyone else have an announcement? We're all good. The kids want to sing to you. I'm sorry, I didn't call you all kids. The students want to sing for you. So get on your mark. Get <laughs> a living sanctuary. As they gather around this manger this morning, may we all be a living sanctuary. Would you stand? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous things. Blessed be God's name forever. Amen. And now we turn around and face the doors of the sanctuary where we come in as broken children and the place where we confess to God that we are sinful and we ask for God's forgiveness. So, beloved, now is the time to wake from sleep. We confront our sins and we confess them to the one who is merciful and just. God of new beginnings, we confess that we have not welcomed your holy reign. We have strayed from your paths. 
We prepare for war instead of peace. We dishonor one another and your creation. Purify us with your refining fire and set us again on your way of love that we may bear fruit worthy of repentance and welcome your coming among us. Amen. midst, a tender branch, a living sign. By water and the Spirit, you are joined in this wonder. You have put on Christ, and your sins have been washed away. Rejoice in the way of the Lord. Amen. We pray together. Stir up the wills of all who look to you, Lord God and strengthen our faith in your coming, that transformed by grace, we may walk in your way through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated.
In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to, to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belongs to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married with him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there was shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appear, appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will, that will cause great joy for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior was, has been born to you. He's Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those whom he, his favor rests. When the angels left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what they had been told, what told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told.
The word for today comes from James 5. Be patient, therefore, beloved, until the coming of the Lord. The farmer waits for the precious crop from the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and the late rains. You also must be patient. Strengthen your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is near. Beloved, do not grumble against one another, so that you may not be judged. See, the judge is standing at the doors. As an example of suffering and patience, beloved, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. According to St. Matthew, the 11th chapter, glory to you, O Lord. When John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, John sent word by his disciples and he said to him, Are you the one who is to come or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who wear soft robes are in royal palaces. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This, it is one about whom it is written. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. T truly, I tell you, among those born of women, no one has arisen greater than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. I invite you to be seated. Will you pray with me the prayer of preparation? Holy God, you have a word for me today. Make my heart soft and plant your word in me in order that it may bear fruit in your kingdom. Amen. I have a question for you to ponder. Why are you here today? Why are you here on a day that's kind of cool outside? It's calling for about a 90% chance of rain and those of us who don't like bad hair days might not want to come out. So the question is, why are you here today? Was it for the angel that stood here? Or was it for the shepherd that stood over there? Or maybe even you're here for the narrator today. But why are you here? I bet that we all have the same answer. We came to worship Christ and to be in community. Amen? During this time in Advent, we talk a lot about waiting. And for those of you who have the patience of me, we don't like waiting, do we? We don't like being in this position where in the swimming pool we're just dog paddling. 
We just don't like being stationary. But sometimes we have to be. Because I don't know about you, but there's nothing we can do to get to 5 o'clock today just like that, is it? We literally have to wait it out. Even if it's 5 o'clock somewhere, we, we have to wait it out, don't we? There's nothing we can do. We have to wait patiently. But today our kids came together to sing some Christmas carols for us and to lead us in worship to the Christ child and to tell us the importance of telling the story. How many of you knew that one verse of all of those Christmas carols? And none of you probably learned that at some jukebox at Lizard's Thicket. <laughs> right? We all came together at some place like this, and as children probably, we learned those songs. We learned Away in a Manger, and we learned Silent Night, and we learned Joy to the World. And you know, all of those songs are equally beautiful sang in a place like this as they are in your car and walking down the street and at the mall. Those songs are equally beautiful everywhere. And it's part of that mission that we all have that we have to go and tell it. We have to tell the story that the Christ child is born. He's born and he's in a manger, but he doesn't stay there. He grows up and he takes the sin of the world on his shoulders, goes to the cross for me and for Susan and for Abram and for Ronnie and for Mary. He goes to the cross for every one of us. So that one day we too might be reunited with the God who loves us, created us, and gives us everything we could ever need. Notice I said need. Because sometimes we want more than we need. Amen? He gives us everything. He is everything that we need. That's a story we have to go tell. We have to tell that story that not only is he born, that time stopped at his birth. All the time leading up to Christ's birth stops and a new world begins. That's the story we have to go tell. And we also have to tell what difference it makes in our lives. Not that we just got to come to church and we got to see this cute little baby laying in the manger and we went home and opened up presents and life stayed the same. Because see, when you encounter the real Jesus, your life is going to change forever. Amen? There are so many hurting people in the world who yet don't know what comfort we know. A comfort that we know that God is in control and that God loves us and that he cares for us and that he forgives us for anything we might have done wrong. And he sets us anew. He puts us on a new path so that we can, again, that we can go tell. We can go tell. And maybe the only thing you know to say is joy to the world. The Lord has come. Maybe the only phrase you know is away in a manger. But whatever it takes, whatever you need in that story, we got to go tell it. I don't know about you, but I'm like bursting from the seams. Not literally, but like I'm literally, I want to go tell about this Jesus that has totally changed my life. And he's made me a new person. And that's the story I want you to go tell. I want Jesus to mean so much to you that you can't help but go tell. Because then you know what happens is we go and tell and they come and see. 
And they experience a God that we have experienced, one that loves us and cares for us and forgives us even through the things that we mess up in life. Amen? Because we mess up. Amen? We mess up and, and he makes us new. So as we continue to wait to celebrate the birth of Christ and we continue to wait to return of Christ, may all of you be antsy. And may you be on edge and want to go tell that story so that others too can come and see and gather around this manger and see that the world has changed forever for all of us. Amen? Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we prepare for the fullness of Christ's presence, let us pray for a world that yearns for new hope. 
abundant God, we rejoice in your creation. Revive lands that have squandered and been depleted. Make gardens flourish in cities and neighborhoods. Cleanse polluted air and water so that living things may breathe, drink, and praise you. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing God, we rejoice in your compassion. Comfort any in distress because of worry, illness, or loss. We especially pray for those in this community that we know by name, Patricia Backman, Alberta Berry, Nell Buff, Lavinia Butts, Becky Kuhn, Tom Roof, Cindy Thurman, Linda Waters Hamilton, and Pastor Daryl Edwards. We also pray this day for those at home and those who are recovering from surgeries. We pray for Ann Addy, Preston Bryant, Shirley Cooper, Charlene Corley, Blake Donaldson, James Hallman, Dale Miller, Keith Morris, Joel Price Sr., Annette Price, Jean Schofield, Jane Sexton, and Jean Sheely. And God, we have more names to bring to you. As we wait for healing, we bring names to you. We say those names out loud, and some of those names we hold quiet in our hearts. Susan. God, in your mercy, your abiding God, we rejoice in your company. Give us calm and patient hearts as we gather with family and friends. Keep us mindful of those to whom this season is not a happy one. Console the grieving and surround them with loving support. God, in your mercy, Faithful God, we rejoice with Mary, the mother of our Lord, and with all the saints that your mercy endures for all generations. Look with favor on those who have died and led us to a joyful singing of your everlasting promises. God, in your mercy, God of our longing, you know our deepest needs. By your spirit, gather our prayers and join them with the prayers of all your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We left off the peace, but we're doing it. So the peace of Christ be with you all. Share that peace with one another. God's peace.
mean, sharing the peace is too much fun to skip over ever, isn't it? Amen. Amen. Yes. So during our worship, we give back to God. So however it is that you would want to give back to God this day, if you're online and want to send in or you want to go online, however it is, we give back to God because God has given us everything that we have. Amen? Amen. So we give back. We give thanks for these gifts and we pray together. Eternal God, you make the desert bloom and send springs of water to thirsty ground. Receive these gifts of bread and wine and money and make us messengers of your mercy and love for all in need of your healing and justice. We ask this through Christ our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for the promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. And so it was in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took a cup and he gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection, and we look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. Make your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The angels say, be strong and do not be afraid and wait with patience. So as we receive communion this day, you'll come to the center aisle and we'll be receiving communion by method of intinction. So you'll receive the bread and you'll dip it either in the wine or the grape juice and then return back to your seats for a time of prayer and meditation. This meal is open to all of God's children. So come and taste and see that he is good.
What do you stand? And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We pray together. Faithful God, in this meal you have remembered your mercy, bringing heaven to earth in the body and blood of Christ. As we wait for the day when all your promises will be fulfilled, sustain us and strengthen us by this holy mystery. Guide us toward your promised future, coming to birth in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now receive this blessing. God, the eternal word, who dwells with us in Jesus and who holds us in the grace of the Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. We sing. So we are to go into the world and to tell the story. We follow the light of Christ into the world. 
We are God's people on a mission. We have gathered, we have been fed, and now we go out to make a difference in the world. Amen. Amen.